Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is GGF bringing you episode 40, the big 4 0 of this first batch of recording for Let's Play Baldur's Gate 3. I say first batch, what I mean by that is I tend to record in batches. So if you see that Baldur's Gate or another LP ends after a certain episode, that doesn't mean that it's dead forever. It means that I can actually, you know, and do go back uh, from time to time and record another batch of it or another batch and kind of keep it going like that. Or I go back and record a lot if, you know, the spirit moves me to keep playing. But this is the first batch. We've gone 40 straight, so feeling really good about that. We are in the, the goblin ruin that they've taken over. It's wild and crazy. And uh, we're just finding secrets and looking for different things. So hope you guys will strap on in and uh, join me for this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's um, first thing I want to do is enhance my leap and go ahead and hop into here. I guess we can't. Okay, so let me hop over down here. I don't want to keep losing HP. Ooh. What's that? Okay, it's red, but there's nobody that could possibly see me, right? Trap disarm toolkit. Thing is, if I ever go to sell them, I could get caught for stealing a uh, burrow hole. I'm way too big. Yeah, what are we supposed to do with that? Can we transform into a mouse or something? Okay, this is the door that those the halfling and her company was kind of guarding. There's something going on down there. Oh, there's something going on down there. But I don't know if I want to steal, honestly. No, not too HP. Uh, you can move objects around. Oh, man. I didn't mean to take the two HP. Smoke powder barrel. Heavy chest. With haste. What do we have going on here? Are they trying to imply Is there something going on here? Um Do we blow the barrels up? Let's see this heavy chest. We'll go ahead and lock pick it. It's got ooh an eighteen, and we don't have guidance from Oh, 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 wow. Massive win. Didn't have guidance from Shadowheart or Will, but we unlocked it. 257 gold. Well, they can't catch us stealing that. That's a huge amount to find. What does moving objects have to do? Alright, let's have... Let's have Lazel jump. She can naturally jump pretty good. Repositioning. Let's have her come down here. Jump on a box. Oh, dear. Okay, let's see if she can perceive something. Go, Rocky Crevice. And these things have stayed interesting. Mm -hmm. Better not be cursed. <clears throat> not a chance I'll fit in there. Huh. Do we blow it up? Do we wait for Saza to maybe Saza to join the party or something? I really don't get it. Do all our characters have dark vision? I think so. Okay, so let's have Will 
jump right here. Then let's have him jump down here. Wow, minus 5 HP. That's a bugger. Can he land on the boxes? Minus 3 HP on the boxes. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know why I'm taking these HP losses. <laughs> Excuse me. Coming here, which is also behind a locked door. Some crates. Some shelves. I don't understand the purpose of this room. Some little altar. One second, guys. All right, we're back. We're going to have to take another little break here in a second, but don't really know what's going on here, what we're really looking at. Um, there's some skulls, rotten fish, makeshift ladle. Let's move that out of the way. Wooden bowl. Get it? Is there, is there something of importance here? Huh. Well, might as well check the crates while we're here. We're in somewhere we're probably not supposed to be. Cauldron. Another makeshift ladle. I don't get the point of this room, but... Um... If we come down this way... There's a damaged vase to check. Oh, there's actually a door here. Okay, it'd be best to stay out of sight here, probably. Um, let's have Elzarian. Group with Lazel. Why is she grouping that way? I guess I can't. There we go. Alright, let's. Do we want to check the boxes? Oh man, there's such good stuff to take. We're gonna use those, so might as well take them. I'm not taking those because if we go to sell them, they could see that they're stolen goods. So I'm not trusting that. Uh, still don't know what's up with these, like two long swords, wooden shelves. All right, so let's come over here. Jump through here. Okay, we have to enhance the jump. Oh no, we got it. Boom, through the wall. How much farther can I go? Shadow Heart is gonna have to do something she really doesn't like to do. Uh oh, did we get that? Yeah. And hop around here. Minus 4 HP, but it has to be done. I guess no one can catch her. Does she have Featherfall? Or Featherfall spell? Minus 4 HP. Minus 3 on top of the box. Sorry, Shadowheart. Oof. Let's try this way. Now let's all get together. Alright, let's see what's behind door number one. Can we open it? No. Right tool will do the trick. We 
got a 10 difficulty class with guidance is not too bad. We just passed an 18 after all. Another 19 rolled. Very good. Oh. Oh. Defiled Temple. Palma, bodyguard of the High Priestess. Oh, there's some stuff going on in here. Um. Um. Okay, she only goes that far. Yeah, there's some stuff going on in here. Uh. Uh. Time to press ahead. <clears throat> She's gonna see us. You've set foot in a restricted area. A swift exit may be in order. Try to convince them you belong here. We have guidance. I don't have, uh... I need the long rest, I guess, for, uh... Illithid stuff. Oh, uh, look at me. Do I look dangerous? A 22, bruh. Oh, I screwed this one up. Damn. Oh, what am I doing? I can't even make a 22 with a 20 sided die. That was just a bad move. Uh. The only thing you managed to convince them of is that you absolutely do not belong here. I guess we should go then. Dang. Lessons for sensible li living 12 Zariel's Fall. Zariel's Fall. A slim, cheaply constructed book. The front cover is decorated with an engraving of a grimacing man holding a tankard of ale. The foreword to this brief account of Zariel's fall captures the tone of the entire text. Greetings, sensible folk. Already I can detect grumbling in the agitated rattle of pipe stem against teeth. A lesson dedicated to an Archduke of Avernus. Has Harrington taken leave of his senses? Quiet your complaints. I assure you I have not. It is true that cosmic occurrences are often insensible by their very nature, but the tale of Zariel strikes close to home. In her downfall, you'll be reminded of those haughty, do-gooding neighbors and acquaintances who rightfully arouse your suspicions. One moment they are suggesting you grow turnips rather than potatoes on that fallow patch, and next they have their kitchen knife strapped to their belt and are suggesting you explore the abandoned crypt behind the Giles farm. The Giles Farm. In short, Zariel was a celestial being tasked with monitoring the ebb and flow of the Blood War, of which more in Volume 11 matters of little importance to sen sensible folk. Observing was not righteous enough for Zariel, though, and she took it upon herself to become directly involved, like the oaf who sees two fellows fighting over a spilled tank or a veil, and rather than applauding their efforts, cracks their skulls together and causes a tavern wide brawl. She invaded Avernus, was defeated, and now rules there, corrupt and wicked. What can sensible folk learn from this foolish tale? It is obvious. Do not strive to correct what cannot be corrected. Look not to distant lands and conflicts, but to your fields, your family, and your friends. There is nothing but misery to be gained from interfering in the hardships of others. Harrington, Nathalin. Now that's actually in reference to the, the fall of Avernus, or the invasion of Avernus, whatever that last uh, module was for D&D. Geth and Mind Flares, notes from a soothsayer, embossed with a unique personal seal in the Water Davian style. This book's author appears to be someone of high status within that city. One second, guys. Alright, and we are back. So, um, what did I want to do? Notes from a soothsayer. Let's go ahead and read this. Each chapter of this book details a unique case study in the Sue Sayre, Sayre Geraldine Haverlow's illustrious career. Its 23rd chapter is conspicuously dog-eared. Ooh, let me catch my breath, guy. 
Chapter 23, The Frightened Noble and the Ochre Demon. Hereunder I have transcribed a conversation between myself and a young nobleman of my lifelong acquaintance. Typically he came to me for guidance in matters of love and fortune, but his visit to me on one particular occasion stands out particularly in my mind. Himself, Madam, please, what I say to you is true. Myself, perhaps you'd be so kind as to repeat it for the record. Himself, the fellow I met was ochre of skin, with ears like an elf, and the nose of a half-rotted corpse. Markings like those on a fawn's hide decorated his skin. Myself, I see, and what did he say as he approached you in the, what was it, misted glen upon your lands? Himself, the fellow, the creature, the man, came to me slowly, a blade in his right hand. I was transfixed as though stricken stiff by some magic. He held the sword below my chin and asked me something I could not understand. I can see it now, the blade, silver as the moon, as, as the moon in a lake beneath my chin. Myself, calm yourself, sir, you are quite safe. You say you could not understand what the fellow said. Himself, at first, no, no, at first I knew not what tongue he spoke, but he seemed to glean my confusion and tried in common instead, and he said, tell me now, which plane is this? It was then I lost grasp of the ghost and fainted directly to the ground. Myself, and then, himself, and then when I woke, I know not how much later he was gone, and I flew to you. Myself, I understand, child. Be not frightened, for you have been visited by a most auspicious omen. Your crops will yield twice their wealth this year. Himself, truly, but who was he? Myself, he was a figment of your inner demon, a messenger from your deepest intuition, and he came to inform you of your impending luck. And I tell you, it was so. Huh. That's pretty interesting. Let's check this book rack. Soul coins, a treaties. Uh, we shouldn't be in here. I could maybe sneak about. Um, let's quick save. Uh, I go ahead and enhance my leap. Let's break up the the group mode. I'll go ahead and jump. Path is interrupted. Let's see if I can make it. Then I'll use Umbral Cloak. Here goes nothing. Seen re entering a forbidden uh, area. Apparently, it's becoming <laughs> rather. Okay, so we don't want to mess with her because if we do end up messing with her, it might turn the entire tribe hostile. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. At some point, we're going to have to start slaughtering goblins. I mean, I would think. Unless we cut some kind of deal with them or something, but anyway, let's head out the door. And, uh... Hmm. Can't get there. And come here. There's no lever to go down or anything. We can come here and just jump across. isn't letting me jump over here. Death to the chasm below. Oh. Let's not be seen by that trio. I don't trust them. Uh, I guess let's Obey the see priestess. Now here's somebody special. The absolute has touched you, hasn't she? Priestess Gut needs to touch you too. 
Hold out your arms so I can mark your flesh. A priestess. One of the leaders, no doubt about it. Let's make her squeal. What's that? Tell your friend to keep quiet, or he'll lose his good eye. Ignore him. Tell me about the Mark Priestess. Ready for the fire, are ya? Why should I let you brand me? Let's the faithful recognize one another quick sharp. That way nobody'll mess with ya. And it's charged with magic. Ordinary slobs can't see it. Only us that follow the absolute. You ready? Brace yourself. This'll sting. Um, let's see what happens. Hold out your hand. Shadowheart disapproves. All right, wait. Let's hold still. <laughs> I'm going to load. I'm so. Uh... I don't want to be branded by goblins. I think this would be the point where we kind of go, okay, the jig is up. You know, we're not. <laughs> I'll end up following a uh, Razglin or whatever. All right, but first, let's um maybe head up here. Uh. Let's see what we want to do. Do we talk to these two fellas? Druk and Bez, I think so. Let's come over here. Um, what is that? A ball, a scrying, a scrying eye. eye. Best not do anything suspicious while it's watching. Uh huh. Let's go in here. Huh, who's this? Scrut. No, Scrut. I need a quick word. What you staring at? Move along, ugly! Huh. Your axe got broke. McGlubbyet, your axe got broke. Your whips don't sting, your priests all croaked. Show your face and we'll take your eyes, then chop you down to goblin size. The absolute will make you kneel, beg and grovel, bleed and squeal. McGlubbyet. The absolute does not like McGlubbyet. The curse of the vampire, elixir of poison resistance, we'll grab that. Oral histories of Palat of Faerun Paladin. Over Oathbreakers. I, uh, I didn't want nothing by it, your ladyship. Honest, I didn't. Life, much like your words, is meaningless. Well, end the latter to save the former. Huh. This book is comprised of several chapters, one for each cited source. It claims to contain first-hand transcriptions of the oral histories of several storytellers throughout the realm. Chapter 7, Valamore the Outcast, 52 years of age, human paladin, oathbreaker. Given Valamore's reputation in Athkatla, the village to the east, it's abandoned. Looks that way, but scouts said they heard something moving around out there. Something big. It's not our concern. Hmm. Our prey is elsewhere. Something big in the village to the east that we were exploring, Moonhaven. Huh. Given Valamore's reputation in Athkatla. The city she once called home, I met the former night officer of the noble and exclusive order of the Radiant Heart with no small amount of trepidation. She has lived... How many lived... raiders do we have? Plenty of lashes, loads of hunters, and a few pariahs to carry the powder kegs. Powder kegs. They're prepared to fight for the absolute. What they do ain't exactly fighting. All they gotta do is light up the powder and burn. Then they're prepared to die for the absolute good. Dying's the only thing they're good at. Huh. She has lived Sorry as an elk. Sorry to you, mistress. Got a message from the guards. <gasps> yes? We got visitors. Don't know who they are. Mercenaries, maybe? Interesting. 
ignore. I wasn't expecting guests. I throw you to the huh. Given, uh, she has lived as an outcast for some years now, and the rumors of her character quite preceded her. I spoke to one of the prelates of the Order, who described her as a dreadful... If he doesn't, I'll cut out his tongue. If he don't have a tongue, he can't tell us nothing. The prisoner can keep his tongue. It's spikes I'll be removing. I spoke to one of the prelates of the Order who described her as a dreadful, sadistic traitor, warning me that to find her would be suicide, that she would kill me before I could speak a single word. He was wrong. When I finally tracked her down, we spoke for hours, and I left with her blessing to share her story. I will not disclose our meeting place, as the Order punishes those who violate their vows with beheading. You have already failed me once, and now you dare to question me. I, uh... I didn't mean nothing by it, your ladyship. Honest, I didn't. Life, much like your words, is mean. Of course, I regret it. Breaking an oath isn't going back on your word. It's not an ethical quandary. It wrenches out a part of your soul. Before, I could call on angels to fight alongside me. I could banish fiends back to the hells and demons to the abyss, all with a thought and a prayer. I lost my voice. I speak, but this isn't my voice. It's an echo, a whisper. Tell them this, most days I wish I'd died rather than breaking my oath, but I'd never take back what I did, what I refused to do. Damn the order, service became dogma, obedience was virtue, to question was sin. Justice and duty are uncomfortable bedfellows, and eventually they make bastards of us all. Huh. We'll grab that. Um, the scrying eye. How many raiders do we have? Plenty of Skull of scorching ray. Of hunters and a few pariahs to well, no. Let's grab the scroll of scorching ray. What they do ain't exactly fighting. All they gotta do is light up their powder and burn. X got broke a goblin no. scimitar. Um. Alan scimitars are worth money. Let's grab it. Goblin poem. That'll go for a. Uh... You think the dwarf is ready? Yet? Get your eye off my arm. And the curse of the vampire. It's free books, so check out the vases. Okay, um, who is that anyway? Uh, Night Warden Minthara. Razik, Saza. Let's go in this ladder. Huh, um. What are they delaying for? Can't we just swarm the forest? Drow wants to know exactly where those adventurers came from. What are they doing? Hiding in trees? We'll smoke them out, no problem. Huh. Sharp Eye Neem? Heading to see our new pet. It didn't seem easy, I'll give it that. I'll tell you. The scrying eye was looking at me all strange. <laughs> Sharp eye Nats. Right. What would some drow wizard in Moonrise want to look at you for? Bloody hell! What? Certainly you won't be because of your beautiful eyes. <laughs> what do they need to be looking at any of us for is what I'm saying. We're all on the same side. Not like we're going to set the true soul on fire. They're drow. Huh. They're stuck-ups. Ignore them. And be happy they didn't throw you to the spiders yet. Uh huh. Seen this mess? Flaming Fist Thuggo took a chunk out me arm last raid out. You fought Flaming Fist? That last dim we it. They were guarding some uppity noble and his friends. <laughs> Not very well, mind. Your drow pals carried him off, left the real spoils to us. Huh. Sharp Eye Eve. 
Watch your step down by the pens. woogie has been getting fat on your kind lately. Right. The foul stench of slaughter turns suddenly sweet through the rat's nose. Blood smell. Life smell. Not like the great hollow below, which smells only of death. Huh, are we speaking to animals, by the way? Do you think the dwarf is ready yet? I'm hungry. Yeah. Orders were to stand by here. No booze, no sneaking off. Huh, I'm moving on the floor. Skeleton. Ooh, ring of poison resist. The ring's emerald glows a deep, deadly green. Nice. Let's give that to maybe Shadowheart. That skelly had a ring on it. Scar sarcophagus. A bone. This bone, part of a leg or perhaps an arm, is clean of blood and sinew. Candle. A half burnt beeswax candle. Could go in the door to meet Minthara. We won't do that yet. I want to keep exploring. What is this way? How did we get here? Oh, we didn't talk to these peeps yet, it looks like. Oh, wait, this is up here, okay. Potion of healing. Rescue Volo journal updated. I wonder why. Did we find him up here? Three potions of healing, we'll grab those. Oh, is that Volo in there? Who's this? Zerga. I think we talked to Zerga. You should come on the raid. Uh, Gribbo. Dearest Elminster. Dearest Elminster, I must be brief as I'm under some duress having become the esteemed guest of a rambunctious host of goblins. I would, of course, rather be under duress than an under a feathered duvet. Duvet at danger as danger and adversity are the very ink in my well, so this is good news indeed. As you well know, there is no wit quicker and no tongue more silver than that of your humble friend and scribe, and by regaling my would-be foes with tales of goblin heroics... I have become an indispensable member of their tribe, namely their chronicler, chronicler and bard. In this guise, I shall live among them a while so that I may observe their peculiar habits and rituals as closely as possible. All of this shall, of course, be documented in my next magnum opus, My Life Among the Conquering Host, to be available at all good booksellers forthwith. An enticing extract is enclosed with this missive. I implore you to spread the word. Certainly do, my dear. I implore you to spread the word so that adventurers and curiosity seekers across the Sword Coast and beyond will be a quiver with anticipation of this life-extending and soul-enriching guide. And with that, I must depart. I am summoned to sing a ballad of my own composition, and the lady, yes, I call her a lady, who delivered the summons, is rather impatient, not to mention well-armed. Truth be told, I believe she has some, dare I say, deep affection for me. She calls me her pigeon and rarely strays from my side. Perhaps there shall be a chapter in my book regarding goblin marriage rituals. I balk at nothing in my quest for knowledge. Until we meet again, inform the world entire of the diligent research I'm undertaking, and ensure word of my upcoming masterwork is on, on the lips of every innkeep and sellsword from Waterdeep to Bellier. Volo. Um. We pick that up. <laughs> Maybe we'll deliver the message if we ever see. Uh, if we ever see a uh, homie Elminster, a couple burlap sacks before we get to Volo here. Ooh. I could write something in the absolute zone if I knew more about her. All 
right, let's uh, talk to Gribbo now. Don't go bothering my pigeon. He's mine. <laughs> So I, uh, does your bird have a name? Um, Peach. So I see. Do you have plans for this pigeon? Keep him safe. Listen to him coo. Till I get hungry or some such. What's it to ya? Uh, I was admiring him. I'd like one of my own. Then catch one on your own. The mark glows. But you feel nothing in response. Your illithid power is beyond reach until you rest. We need a long rest. Detect thoughts. Eagle Splendor. Advantage. Let's detect her thoughts. Get a bonus from Guidance. Nine. All right. Better not go yapping about my pigeon. I should have turned him over to Mindora by now, but he's such a nice little pigeon. Huh. Uh, withholding prisoners? Your boss won't be happy to hear that. What? Oh, oh, I ain't. Minthora don't give a cake what you think. Bah, just take him if you care so much. See if he'll sing for the likes of you, though. Nothing <laughs> think. Here's the key. Pigeon's all yours. <laughs> Volo. Can I talk to Volo before we open up? Oh, my friend, we can speak freely. I'm in no hurry to take my turn on that spit out front. Perhaps you'd be so kind as to unlock this cage? How'd you end up in this place? Curiosity, my friend. It didn't benefit the cat, but it's the foundation of my career. Though I admit I've hit something of an impasse. Please unlock my cell. What career could possibly involve getting locked up by goblins? Volothamp Gedarm, realm renowned author, author, and tastemaker at your service. All right, I'll get you out. Bless you, my friend. I'll wait nicely, but please don't tarry. Alright, um. Aha! I knew I could count on you, my friend. We mustn't tarry, but I'd hate for our friendship to end here. Please, won't you meet me once we've both slipped the goblin yoke? Um. Uh, go to my camp. We'll talk there once we're both safe. Smashing! Soon, my friend. Soon we can share the flagon of something liquid and a tale of daring do. I'll slip away when the coast is clear. See you soon, my friend. I simply can't wait to pick your brain! <laughs> Potion of invisibility. <laughs> That's awesome. He's out of here. We rescued Volo. We didn't level up though. Not yet. Rags. Okay. Is there anything in the cage? Burlap sack. Three red apples. Get those a uh, Lazel. A bowl, a cabbage. Seven camp supplies, vibrantly green and seasoned with a good amount of dirt. Grab the cabbage. What about the sweet potato? Is that worth it? Three camp supplies, roasted, steamed, candied, or fried. There are as many recipes for this versatile root as there are cultures in Faerun. Um, looks like there's garlic there, too. Maybe not... Free sweet potatoes? Oh, we'll leave them behind, I think. What was in this cage? Is that where they originally kept them? 
All right, tomato. Uh, three potatoes. <laughs> it's funny looting potatoes. Like I'm not above it. All right, let's get out of here. Come out here. Toza, Zerga. Gribbo. Did we talk to Gribbo? Abderak, who's that? Abderak. Let's talk to Gribbo. Shove off! Oh. Huh, we can go up from here. Serve the absolute and you may Absolute looking out for how strong. What in the world? <laughs> Who's that? Liam? Where do I know that from? Collapsed corridor. Gilded chest. 112 gold and a hill giant finger makes an elixir of hill giant strength. Thanks to the finger's vast size, each spot of fungus, mud, and flesh stuck beneath its fingernail is agonizingly clear. Huh. Okay, if we come this way, what could we find over here? We already got that. Oh, I thought we got that chest last time. Another gilded chest up here. They store a lot of stuff up here. Two gold, a scroll of sea invisibility. Scroll of Tasha's hideous laughter. Scroll of detect thoughts. I don't know. Just give it to Lazel. We don't really need it. Nobody's right. gonna push us around anymore. Let's come back over here. And now let's try to rescue Liam, I guess. See if we can get through this hole here. Can we get in here? Oh, wait a minute. We don't have to get in there that way. We can just go down and go in. Maybe talk to Abderak. Who may not be so easy to fool as these goblins on receiving her grace. Alright, how long have we been playing? 43 minutes, so I have to wrap it here anyway. I want to say thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed episode 4-0. I had a blast. Hope you guys did too. Hope you're enjoying the LP if you're watching it. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you guys very much. Next time we'll see what's going on in there. And in there. So it should be fun. Hope you'll join me for that. Until then, guys, much love, peace, and joy. All good things to you and yours. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.